Tough weekend for fantasy owners as Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Des Bryant will miss at least six weeks with a broken bone in his foot. Very, very tough situation, guys, but I'm here to try and help you out. We're hopefully going to be able to get through this. I'm going to try and find you guys some players that can help you out with your roster, hopefully get you through this whole Des Bryant fiasco and get you toward the playoffs so that you can get Des back on the field and get yourself some money this year in fantasy football. I'm Nick Carey here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show, guys. I've got five wide receivers today that I'm going to talk about, guys that are owned in fewer than 50% of leagues who can potentially step in and help you out with your fantasy roster. So what we're going to do is start off right at the top with number one, and that is, of course, the guy who is kind of stepping in as the number one wide receiver now in Dallas. That is Terrence Williams. So... Just like in real life, Terrence Williams could be potentially the replacement for you for Des Bryant. Now, Terrence Williams is actually only owned right now in 45% of leagues. He did have 60 yards this past week, which is a little bit disappointing, but it is worth noting, of course, that the game plan was a little bit weird. The Cowboys were down quite a bit in that game, and there was a lot of passing to the running backs because that's what the Giants were willing to give. But in the future, I don't expect that the Cowboys running backs are going to catch the ball quite as often as they did on Monday or on Sunday night. So uh, do pay attention to a guy like Terrence Williams. If he is available in your league, like I said, he's available in more than 50% of ESPN leagues right now. Go out there and snag him. I think he should be the number one guy picked up in all leagues right now, pretty much across the board. You can always find you know, a spot on your bench for a guy like Terrence Williams, who's going to be the wide receiver on a team that should be a pretty good offense. So definitely go out there and snag him if he is available. Number two on the list, guys, I have a guy who's not quite as exciting, and that is Dante Moncrief of the Indianapolis Colts. Now, Dante Moncrief is actually available right now in over 65% of leagues right now. He's only owned in 31% on ESPN. That's very, very low for a guy who it's... Quite frankly, he looked probably the best of all the wide receivers there in Indianapolis now that T.Y. Hilton's probably going to himself miss a couple of weeks along with Des Bryant. So uh, it's a tough situation there with T.Y. Hilton because I know he was a wide receiver one for a lot of people as well. But Dante Moncrief stepped up. He played very, very well. Now this could be a situation where the likes of Andre Johnson and Philip Dorsett just haven't quite found themselves acclimated with Andrew Luck quite yet. But still, Dante Moncrief, for the time being, has some value. I don't think there's any question about that. He had 46 yards and a touchdown on 11 targets this past week. That is a lot of targets for a guy who was pretty much going undrafted in most leagues and, like I said, still only owned in about a third of leagues right now. So definitely go out there and pick him up if he is available. He could be somebody who could definitely help you out in some of the PPR-type formats. And he also does have home run potential as well. He's a solid player. Kind of interesting that he was considered to be the fourth wide receiver on this team going in. But now, I mean, arguably, Arguably, he's the number one there in going into week two. So kind of a crazy change of situations, but I think Dante Moncrief should be owned in pretty much every league right now, should be high on everybody's waiver wire uh, situation, and definitely go out there and get him if he lost Des Bryant or T.Y. Hilton. He's a pretty solid replacement for either of those guys. Number three on the list, I have James Jones. Now, a lot of people are going to wonder why I don't have James Jones at number one. And I completely understand. James Jones did actually look very good in week one. He had two touchdowns. And actually, I think, if I remember correctly, he had a third one that was either called back or at least he was targeted and it was very, very close to being a touchdown. Can't remember off the top of my head, but I do remember looking at that and thinking, man, he could have had an even bigger day. But... You have to keep in mind the, the whole target situation, guys. Green Bay passed the ball quite a bit there in week one. However, he was still only targeted four total times. Yes, he scored two touchdowns, and you can argue that you know Aaron Rodgers is going to continue to look his way more and more often. But I kind of think of James Jones as almost being a role player in this offense at this point. Yeah, he can score some touchdowns, but do you think James Jones is going to score two touchdowns every single week? I mean, that, that would just be ridiculous. So there's going to be a lot of ups and downs with James, just James Jones, I think. You might be able to find him get another two touchdown or even a three touchdown week before the end of the year, but there also might be five, six games in a row where he goes without a score. And if he goes without a score and he's getting targeted five times a game, he's just not going to produce the type of fantasy numbers that you need on a consistent basis to be considered a high-end wide receiver, especially in PPR formats. Now, in standard scoring formats, in touchdown-heavy scoring formats, I like him a little bit more. That's why I have him at number three and not lower on the list, but I typically like to find guys who are getting targeted more often, so we'll have to see what happens. Now, James Jones, a, like, a lot like Dante Moncrief, currently owned in 32% of leagues. That should increase. He'll probably be owned in 50, 60, 70% of the leagues here going forward, but Again, pay attention to the targets because that's the most important thing that we look for in terms of fantasy value. Uh, you know, if one guy catches a 70-yard pass and that was the only time that he was targeted, 
yeah, it helps you if you had him in there that week, but you can't really project going forward that he's going to put up that type of production. So just keep that stuff in mind, guys, as you're looking at uh, your wide receivers, especially for players to pick up. Next on the list, we have Stevie Johnson of the San Diego Chargers. He is actually only owned in 30% of leagues right now. He had a pretty solid game there in week one. He had 82 yards and a touchdown. Pretty darn good for a guy who was, you know, like I said, being drafted in only about a third of leagues right now. So kind of interesting. Stevie Johnson comes over and he really didn't produce anywhere else before this uh, for the past couple of years. But you know what? He's looking a lot like he did in Buffalo during those couple of years, playing out of the slot, playing pretty well for the for the San Diego Chargers out there. And I really think he's found himself a nice role there in the San Diego offense. He was the guy that I kind of had my eye on as an interesting target early in the season, potentially. And he really showed it off there in week one. He had a nice game, like I said. So I'm interested in Stevie Johnson, at least until Antonio Gates gets back that will be four games so he'll be out there as a starting wide receiver playing out of the slot well maybe not technically starting but he'll be out there in all their three wide receiver sets for the most part playing out of the slot and that is a very valuable spot for the San Diego Chargers Eddie Royal did a lot of damage there over the past couple of years and there's no reason to think that Stevie Johnson who's arguably more talented than Eddie Royal can't do that or more so I definitely think he needs to be owned in more leagues particularly in PPR leagues and he could get some red zone looks as well just like he did this past week and get you some of those touchdowns Last on the list, guys, I have a guy who is owned in fewer than 5% of leagues. That is Jermaine Purse of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I know all the hype is going to go toward, you know, uh, Tyler Lockett. But look, Tyler Lockett, Lockett, I like him. Arguably probably more valuable considering he has more explosion in the long run. But Jermaine Curse right now, I think, is more acclimated with the offense. He's a guy who can immediately step in and get you some sort of consistency at the wide receiver position. He was targeted more than any other receiver there in Seattle in week one. He was actually targeted 10 times. He caught eight passes for 76 yards. That's a 15-point game in your PPR league. So that's a pretty solid day for a guy who, like I said, is being undrafted in most leagues owned in only 3% of leagues right now. I definitely think Jermaine Curse is somebody that could be considered in those deeper formats. That's why I put him on the list. Obviously, I think there are guys that are probably above Jermaine Curse, and you can ask about those if, uh, you know, if you're interested. But Jermaine Curse, like I said, if you're in a deeper league, he's somebody that I am definitely looking to target. So guys, that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, help me out. Do me a favor, click that like button, and of course, subscribe to this channel if you are new. I would greatly, greatly appreciate all the support, guys. You guys are awesome. I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have in the comment section below as well. If you have any trade questions or anything like that, I'm glad to help you out. Also, make sure that you tweet me at ClickwithTV. I'd be able to answer those on uh, Twitter as well. One last thing, guys. Keep in mind, this channel is being sponsored right now by DraftKings. So if you guys want to help out the channel more than anything, please go over to DraftKings. Give it a try. It's a lot of fun. We They gave away millions and millions of dollars in week one, and they're going to give away millions and millions of dollars every week throughout the season. We have a referral link in the, in the video below. So if you look at the description of the video and you want to try out DraftKings, you can go over there, try it out. It's a lot of fun. Daily fantasy sports, aka weekly fantasy sports as I call it. I have a lot of fun playing on there, guys. I did about I made a couple of bucks this week nothing really spectacular but hopefully you guys did a little bit better I'm more of a conservative yearly player so it's it's a little more difficult for me to go out and go for the home runs every week which is pretty much what you have to do in a draft Kings type of format but if you guys want to try it out please help out the channel use our referral link we would greatly appreciate it thank you guys again for all the support hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something talk to you guys soon here again on the fantasy football swagger podcast